white people, let us see your girl, Adiola, you know, do well. Have you heard the news that the president of the Gambia, His Excellency, Sheikh Professor al Haji, Dr. Abdulaziz Awal, Jemos Jejonk Nasiruddin, Yaya Ejej Jamin Babili Mansa, lost the election, election in the Gambia? Woo! Fada! Fada! But you know, that was not the biggest news. The biggest news is that Jermaine considered defeat. I was shocked. I'm calling you to wish you all the best. The Gambian people have spoken. The country will be in your hands in January. You are the elected president of the Gambia. And I wish you all the best. I have no uh, ill will. And I wish you all the best. Say what? What? I didn't see that coming. Was anybody else shocked? This is a man that said that he would rule Gambia for one billion years. Let me tell you one thing. My fate is in the hands of the Almighty Allah. I will deliver to the Gambian people. And if I have to rule this country for one billion years, I will. A man that has been in power for 22 years and he graciously considered defeat like that without any wahala. I was shocked. But you know, I am so happy. I'm so happy. Jamey, my brother, <laughs> you know, do well. You have done well to concede defeat like that. Hey, <laughs> he must have been watching my show. <laughs> it was a surprise because the day before the election, this man shut down the internet in the Gambia. So no one had access to social media, to Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram and then he ordered the telecommunication department to shut down all international phone calls so nobody in Gambia could call their family members outside the Gambia to tell them about the election and nobody outside the Gambia could call to check on their people during the election and on top of that Yamin closed the Gambian borders throughout the election so people were like ha this man is trying to rig the election no so and not only that he announced before the elections that nobody would be allowed to protest after the election. So we were also sure that he would rig and not concede to defeat. But the same man accepted defeat. It is a new day in Africa. You know, what do you think happened? I mean, something must have happened. You know what? I can only thank the almighty Allah. No, remember, he told us that it is only Allah that could remove him from office. Allah must have removed Yaya Jemmy. We need to thank the almighty Allah. My people, please join me to say Alhamdulillah. Gambians have been celebrating all over the world. <laughs> We're so happy today. Today is the day we stand on our feet and we give free speech. We can say anything we want to say without any soldier or any police harassing us or anything. <laughs> elect. His name is Adama Baro. He's 51 years old. He was born and raised in Gambia and he studied in Gambia and then he later moved to London in the early 2000s in order to further his education in real estate. And while he was doing that, he was also working as a security guard in order to finance his education. So when he went back to Gambia in 2006, he started his own real estate company and then he joined politics and was chosen by a coalition of seven opposition parties to contest against Yaya Jamein in this election. You know, when I read his story, especially that he was working as a security guard when he was going to school in London. I wonder how many people passed him by, seeing him as just a common security guard at that time. <laughs> Who would have thought that that security guard would someday become a president? My people never ever look down on anybody. In fact, if you live in America or London, next time you see a security guard from Africa, be their friend. You never know, they may become the next president of their country, <laughs> which is why I never look down on Khalid. <laughs> it's very troublesome, he gets in trouble. But you know, he will become somebody someday. You know, I do well. You know, I do well. So to the new president elect, I hope you know that we'll be watching you, we'll be following you, we'll be monitoring every policy, everything that you will be doing. Do not disappoint the people of Gambia because when Yaya Jamein took over in a coup 22 years ago, people were very hopeful as well because they were tired of the previous administration. So they thought that Jamein would do well. He ended up becoming a dictator. So we're hoping that history will not repeat itself in the Gambia. Gambians have been through a lot, so the hope is really high. People are looking forward to real change. Do not mess up like Yaya Jamey because we're watching you. Me and Kalido will be watching you live and direct. Congratulations, but you need to get to work as soon as the ceremony is over. So while we're celebrating the triumph of democracy in the Gambia, I'd like to take a moment to remember all those that have lost their lives in the fight for freedom in the Gambia. The list is endless. There are so many people that were killed during the last 22 years of Yaya Jamey, like the mile two prisoners that were killed in August of 2012. Also the 14 students that were massacred because they were protesting in April of 
of year 2000. 14 of them were killed and one journalist was also killed that day. We like to remember Usman Sese, Deida Haidara, as well as all the journalists that were killed during the Jamin administration. And let's not forget the journalists that also disappeared. Like my brother Chip Ebrima Mane, he disappeared since 2006 because of the stories that he did about Jamin. And let's not forget those that tried to overthrow Yaya Jamin in 2006 and he killed all of them, as well as those that were killed when they attempted to overthrow him in December of 2014. That includes the Gambian soldiers that went from the US and the UK. I'm talking about Lieutenant Colonel Nami Sane as well as Captain Njaga Jane. So all the people that paid the ultimate price for democracy in the Gambia, I wonder how their family members must feel on a day like this. May their souls rest in perfect peace. And also let's not forget everybody that has been tortured at the National Intelligence Agency headquarters in Banjul and all the political prisoners. I wonder how they must feel on a day like this. And of course kudos to all the journalists that are living in exile, people like Fatu Kamara, Nanama Keita, and so many others that I do not even know about. You guys fought a good fight and you won, including all Gambians abroad. You guys fought a good fight and you won. And I have to give a shout out to Jeffrey Smith. I'm sure that many Gambians follow him on Twitter. He's a true advocate for democracy in the Gambia. So I am so happy and I'm so excited for all Gambians that it's now a new day in the Gambia. By the way, let me know what you guys think about how Gambians voted. They used marbles to vote. Each voter got a marble which you drop in a drum that has the picture of whoever you wanted to vote for. Apparently a bell rings when you drop your own marble. So the electoral commission said that that bell is what ensures that no one would drop more than one marble. So they said that this method of voting eliminated fraud and prevented rigging. And then they counted the number of marbles in each drum. I actually really like this method because it was very easy for everybody, especially if somebody is uneducated and they cannot read. All you have to do is drop the marble in the drum of whoever you wanted to vote for but I think they can take it a step further so that the marbles will be counting as they are dropping it so that uh, they won't have to be counting one by one so let me know what you think about that method of election so once again congratulations big time to Gambia call it all you know I do well prepare my luggage we are going to Gambia <laughs> we are going to Gambia you guys know I don't know much guess what I'm just keeping it real <laughs>